Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about batteries. This is the first episode of the Munich Unification vlog. We're going to talk about high voltage battery architectures as can be seen in electric vehicles. My name is Stefan Goede. I'm the CTO and a co-founder of this company and let me take you to the high voltage battery lab. This is a typical setup of a high voltage battery as you can see it in electric vehicles. Let me start with the module. A module is a mechanical assembly of 16 battery cells in this case. They are all connected in series, which gives you a voltage of around 60 volt. We see on this table here, we have six of those modules connected in series, which gives you a so-called 96S1P battery string that gives you a voltage of around 400 volt. And we can also see that each of these battery modules um, has a PCBA, uh, electronic control unit attached to it, that is what we call the CMB, the cell monitoring board. The cell monitoring boards are all communicating with one another through a daisy chain um, interface. This is a twisted pair two wire communication wire. Then we also have a main control battery unit. Here we have the software that's running in the BMS. We also have electromechanical components, in this case the two contactors for the positive and the negative side of the battery, as well as a fuse, current sensor, and a pre-charge circuit. We can see that on this table there's actually two battery strings, one of six modules here, another one of six modules here. So um, this is an application which you would find potentially in a truck or in a commercial vehicle where you need uh, not only one uh, battery string, but two or three or four in parallel, that gives you more energy, just to scale up the uh, energy and then increase the range of the vehicle. Actually, the architectures differ between uh, different applications. And I should also mention the module, cell module you see here, is one of many different ways of packaging cells. There's also a cell to pack concept where you basically uh, don't have a modular approach, but you integrate the cells directly into the pack. And more modern cars even sometimes have cell to chassis concepts where the, the battery pack is an integral part of the whole chassis. The term CMB stands for cell monitoring board. A cell monitoring board is a piece of electronics, a PCBA like this which is responsible for the measurement of cell voltages. So the job is to measure the voltage of each individual battery cell. We see here, um, we have a 16S1P cell module. This CMB, we call it internally CMB16, uh, has the job to measure 16 cell voltages, all of the cell voltages of this module. Um, furthermore, the CMB is responsible for the balancing functionality. Balancing is uh, the process of bringing different battery cells back to the same level of voltage. Um, so for that you have a dissipative method um, where you basically uh, dissipate heat in a resistor with a MOSFET switch. So that's another very important uh, job of the CMB to bring all of the cells in the module to the same level. The temperature of the battery cells is also very important to measure and to measure precisely. There are several reasons for it. The first reason is that battery cells uh, like to be in a temperature range where they feel comfortable. For example, between 10 degrees Celsius and 30, 35 degrees. If, if they get very warm, the aging is accelerated. So typically a battery cell is uh, not operated at temperatures above 50 or 60 degrees Celsius because that would lead to an accelerated aging. The other important aspect of temperature is that the um, charge acceptance of a battery cell depends a lot on the temperature. So here we have a problem when it's very cold. A cold battery, cold battery cell, is not able to be charged very quickly. As you can see here in this graph, the charge current limit depends a lot on the temperature. Why is that? Well, the anode, which has to accept the lithium ions in the process of charging, um, can't accept or can't intercalate those ions very well at cold temperatures and as a consequence an effect which is called lithium plating occurs which means that the ions are not going into the anode instead they are being absorbed outside and that can lead to um, cell deterioration. Therefore when you drive your electric car to a charge station there's a feature that you can precondition it for fast charging which among other things uh, manages the temperature of the battery cell, which needs to be in the right range for it to charge. As you can also see on the same graph, when it gets too hot, 
uh, to warm the charge acceptance is also being reduced. That is in order to uh, protect the cell from degradation and from aging. The battery cell voltage is also a very important input parameter for the state of charge algorithm. As you can see on this graph, the open circuit voltage of a battery is correlated to its state of charge. That means if the battery cell is in equilibrium state, we can measure its open circuit voltage and based on that we can determine the state of charge. Um, we can see here that the open circuit voltage curve is very different for different chemistries. Classic example, the lithium iron phosphate LFP chemistry has a very flat open circuit voltage curve, which means that there is a very wide SOC range for a specific voltage. On the contrary, if you look at the NMC cell chemistry, the open circuit voltage curve, it's, it's much nicer for the software engineers because you can determine state of charge much easier when you know the open circuit voltage. So the cell monitoring boards, the CMVs in a battery pack, uh, are very important in order to determine uh, voltage and temperature. And there's a large variety of different CMBs that we have designed at Munich Electrification. Basically, if you look at this, it's pretty straightforward. You have a module and you want to have one CMB per module. Sometimes though, we have large battery packs and we want to uh, have cell monitoring boards which are rather large, which are measuring a larger number of cells and which are contacting the cells in an uh, innovative way. It could be uh, welding or uh, springs or wire bonding or whatever, whatever we want. In this case, the form factor of the CMB is very different. On the other hand, large electronics um, cost money and take space. So there's also an interest in making cell monitoring boards very small. So this is an innovative concept where we actually have uh, three 33 channel cell monitoring boards that are very compact, which we can clip into a holder and therefore we can space, uh, save a lot of space. So basically those, uh, those parts measure as many voltage channels as each and every cell monitoring board here combined. Then of course, there are different housing methods. Uh, this housing, for example, has an integrated nut, which makes the mounting process easy and nice. So there are little, many little things which, uh, which can be done to make CMBs um, optimal for the, for the end application and which make them uh, cost efficient and easy to mount. Well, thank you very much for watching today um, and see you next time.